Heavenly Father, we come to you in this hour, asking for your guidance and protection to our virtual gathering today. We thank you for the gift of life, the gift of family, the gift of work, and the gift of friendship. We thank you for this great opportunity to bring us together in this session as brothers and sisters. Bless the committee, the facilitator, and the attendees of this gathering. May we continue to value and appreciate the true essence and meaning of life with the help of your grace. And as we go along to our discussion today, we humbly pray that you would deepen our understanding. Lord, enlighten us and give us wisdom every day. Forgive us for our shortcomings and remind us to always be mindful of the things we do in life. We offer our life and our decisions to you, O Lord. May this gathering today create a memorable experience and a fruitful outcome. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and our Savior. Amen. Hello, hello, and good afternoon, uh, soulmates. It's the last Saturday of November, and everyone is already feeling the the December. I uh, know the December feels uh, almost Christmas. Yes, uh, we are very happy to have uh, all of our participants. We are at almost more than fifty participants uh, we are expecting that more will be coming in so for this afternoon we have uh, professor Antea V Mariano who is actually in Vietnam right now and uh, we just got to know that she is not in the Philippines and uh, we're very uh, happy and glad that she is uh, joining us and she is giving uh, a lot of her time, no? So, of course, I'll introduce her. So, Professor Mariano is an e-learning specialist, also a senior lecturer at uh, University of the Philippines, Open University, and she was a former, she's a former president of the uh, PELS, or the Philippine e-learning society. And together with uh, Professor Mariano, we have Dr. Juliet Dalagan, and she is the Vice President for Higher Education uh, at Xavier University, Cagayan de Oro City, uh, my neighbor hometown, neighbor in my hometown, because I'm from Iligan City, and uh, I miss going to Cagayan. And of course, moderating for this uh, discussion is our very own Dr. Dave Marshall. So. I am going to turn the screen over to Dr. Marshall. So uh, I know everyone is already very familiar with Dr. Dave. So Dr. Dave, all yours. Thank you, Sir Te, and uh, good afternoon, soulmates. And I would like to say hi, our first greeter, first chatter who, who chatted, of course, the greetings. Hi to Ethel, Mom Ethel Nabor of Holy Name, University. Thank you. And of course, to the last as of this time, Sir Jeffrey Importante. That's the last that I saw on the list. And of course, hi, messages are coming in. Hi to our soulmates from Region 1 to uh, NCR down to all or across the regions. Of course, we are glad once again to have our um, discussant and uh, our invited speaker. Our invited speaker is, of course, uh, a friend of mine in the e-learning society, uh, Antea, but uh, I fondly call her Tenny to be more intimate <laughs> in this discussion. And of course, our discussant, my batchmate, my 
not during high school or elementary or college, but my batchmate in the fellowship in Boston College, uh, Dr. Juliet Dalagan. Thank you very much. Our topic for this afternoon is among the many topics that uh, I, I should say that uh, we did not prioritize during the transition time from face-to-face -to, -face to online learning because we feel that the priority during that time was more into getting the skill in using that technology. Mm -hmm. Student interaction is one of the major issue that I see being the director in the online distance learning at Siliman. A priority this time, especially that we are shifting from full to technology enhanced, like the limited face face to face, and uh, we all know also even before the the pandemic, student interaction comes from different forms or different ways. Our speaker, uh, Professor um, Atheni, uh, made mention about several forms and several articulations on how we can interact with our with our students and i would like to give the first question to our invited speaker to our invited speaker because she articulated well on the different forms of interaction and one of our participants asked a question about what type of the interaction is the most effective and maybe professor antea also can can segue to will all the interaction mentioned which do you think is the most crucial and perhaps the most vital for sure all of these are vital but the most crucial especially during the time of the pandemic and maybe the third question is uh uh, your tip being a practitioner of e-learning coming from UPOU. Penny, please. Okay, uh, mag-start ako with the second question. So what do I think is the most crucial among the uh, interaction mentioned? So during my lecture, I mentioned actually four. Pero yung three, yung very common is the three. Uh, student, student, student teacher, and student content. But I found out that, uh, especially during the pandemic, it, it was also critical for students to have uh, a good interaction with, uh, with the interface or the media that they are using during the learning process. So if you ask me which one is the most crucial, I would say the teacher-teacher and the teacher-students. Why? Because... Uh, uh, both of these interactions have the potential to positively or um, negatively affect the student success, their motivation, and of course, their overall performance. Uh, uh, which interaction, uh, yeah, Dave, sorry. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, which interaction uh, do I think is the most effective? Uh, it depends actually. Uh, both the teachers and students were caught off guard when uh, everything was shifted to online. So it was a challenge to migrate everything into the virtual classroom and uh, institutions had to make sure that uh, the teaching and learning process would continue, right? So the decision whether to hold classes synchronously or asynchronously was uh, uh, dependent on the institution's uh, capability, capability, especially during the onset of the pandemic. Lucky for those with uh, with the ready LMS, like uh, Siliman, of course, De La Salle, UST, all these big universities, you had less uh, one less hurdle. Uh, but for most, it was not that easy. So from what I gathered, most of the schools resorted to Google Classroom. So uh, as much as teachers would want to hold synchronous uh, classes via video conferencing tools such as Google Meet or Zoom or my Microsoft Teams, whatever is available, um, those are the things that is most closest or the closest to face-to-face -to -face interaction. So most of the teachers, they would, they would rather have uh, synchronous classes. But again, uh, it all uh, depends on so many factors, um, especially Unang una na yung internet connection, not only by the students, but also by the teachers. So, siguro, if, if you would ask me which one is the most uh, effective, synchronous classes are uh, the closest to face-to-face -to -face interaction. But yun nga, as I've mentioned, it is really um, uh, depend, depending on the capacity of the institutions.
Ayun, ano pa yung isang question? Tatlo yun, di ba? Uh, there's another one, wait. Yeah, yes, nakamute. yes, another nakamute. one. Nakamute ka another. kanina, Sir Dave. E... When you were speaking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Please state again. <laughs> uh, what was the third question, Dave? Uh, I think you answered already. Um, ah, crucial okay, part. Okay. <laughs> how, how do you deal? How do you how do you deal with the crucial element in student interaction? I think that's the third question. Um, mm, uh, with the with the, because kami sa UPOU, we parang uh, we were less affected by the pandemic because we we just continue on with what uh, we were doing. But I think. Uh, most of my colleagues, yung mga mga colleagues ko in the academy na hindi hindi talaga fully online, uh, they struggled um, uh, about the the student teacher interaction, kasi they prioritize the of course the student content. So you have to to flood them with all the materials that you can give them. But yun nga, uh, according to Dave earlier, na ito talaga yung medyo na neglect ng kaunti ng mga academic institutions. And we were not ready kasi, di ba? I mean, who would have thought na bigla kang magiging teacher online, bigla kang haharap sa camera and all those things. But I think um, very important yung uh, we put our uh, mindset into thinking na uh, the student should be the center. The, the student should be the center of the, the teaching and learning process. Yeah, thank you very much, Tenny. Uh, that those words are very in, uh, enlightening. Um, well, Tenny is uh, an e-learning practitioner, so sabi nga niya, um, hindi siya masyadong affected, no? So sana all. But uh, I'm I'm happy. That is why I we invited really our discussant here, and I think she's affected. Uh, me too, because uh, <laughs> being in being not like uh, UPOU, uh, we are very mm -hmm. much affected, especially that uh, the shift, no, the shift from mm -hmm. from the face to face to to online. We have our invited discussant here. I I I am I am excited to hear from perhaps a from an administrator's perspective. Um, uh, Dr. Dalagan here is the Vice President for Higher Education. I think this is in the college level for tertiary level. Um, the participants are are interested in in what way, how do your school or ensure a student interaction during this time? And what were the preparations perhaps coming from your school, Dr. Juliet? Maybe some training or some implementations or or validations and uh, our participant also uh, sir lester asked about how do you as a an administrator perhaps your observations coming from your teacher motivate the students to participate in an online class i think the who good here is we've been hearing a lot of a lot of uh, sentiments coming from the students. Now, the teachers prepared so much sleepless nights, but the students are not participating in my class. No, and uh, the students are not even submitting their requirements promptly. Maybe you can share your practices, uh, either institutionally or classroom based policies. Dr. Juliet. Thank you, thank you, uh, Sir Dave. No, I'm. I so agree with what um, Mom Tenny, Professor Tenny, mentioned about uh, the, the sharing about um, almost all of the HEIs were shocked, including us, and also uh, Sir Dave. The introduction of Sir Dave that the student-teacher uh, interaction was a bit neglected, and that's very true. I also agree with that. Um, we had already our LMS Moodle a long time ago, but only ten percent. Of the faculty were using that so meaning majority of us were really shocked when we have to force we were forced that's the word we were forced to shift to really fully online not fully online teaching and learning so i'll start with that context and i think all of us have the same context so um last year 2020 um our president formed a committee because again we don't have a center for teaching and learning so father formed a 10 um 10 faculty committee to really look into the training. So we had a mass training. So we have to prepare our faculty uh, for the mass training. We call it the faculty retooling. That's our first um, retooling for our faculty. And we, our framework, so as an administrator, we look for a framework for our training. So the framework for online teaching and learning was on the community of inquiry. 
So that's right, as mentioned also by Ma'am Tenny, um, the Committee of Inquiry was focused on the um, three presences, social uh, presence, which is peer-to-peer uh, -peer or student-student. There's also cognitive that the student has to, the learner has to interact with the content. So that is learner content. We also have teacher presence or instructor presence. So the learner should interact with the teacher. So that was emphasized. However, since this is something new, as mentioned by Mam Tenny, the faculty was so busy preparing for the materials. So it's really more of the cognitive. So, you know, and we don't talk about OER. So the teacher has to uh, produce her, her own video, lecture classes. So um, faculty has to convert uh, her lecture class and then, you know, record a PowerPoint, upload that. So parang one day lang, tomorrow na yung lecture, you have to prepare tonight. So parang yung mga eyebags, grabe. And it was very, very hard for us. And then we learned so much from that. So the next training, after learning for a year, we contacted UPOU. So Ma'am Tenny, thank you so much. So we have a collaboration with UPOU. So we, we know that they have been in the business of um, e-learning for, I think, about 20 plus years. So we know that they know already what are the import, how to design because our training was on uh, enhancing instructional design because we know that's where we were really missing the point, how to design it so that students will not be um, overwhelmed with the materials so that there so that our faculty will maximize the interaction with the students so it really should be well designed so we have a one month training we have a pool of faculty who are trained about 38 of us and then right now ongoing in training for enhancement so that's part of the preparation how do we validate so during last uh, last year uh, so as administrator we crafted our tool we have to evaluate our teachers. So there's a, what we call the online course evaluation. The students has the students have to evaluate. Uh, our modality is by quarter. So bali yung one semester we divide it into two quarters. So per quarter the student has to evaluate their teachers, all subjects. So we have a 40 item tool. Uh, that's one. And then we as administrators we visit the synchronous sessions. So we call it pop in visit. So we observe. Is there interaction? So we call it pop-in. So we also had that during the face-to-face pop-in. We, we do the pop-in visit. So that's another one. This year, we thought we really have to check the design. So we also crafted the tool. We call it the virtual classroom tool. Uh, visit for virtual classroom. So we piloted that this year. Last year, we said, wag muna because the teachers were saying, don't evaluate us yet. We're not ready. So uh, we have to prepare the materials now that they're you know, a bit adjusted. So we are now doing the um, evaluation of the virtual classroom. So how, how is it designed? Because we already have the training. So in terms of training, implementation, and validation, that's what we're doing. We, we've learned, and then we know where our flaws, our weaknesses are. So that's why we conducted another training. And very important question that Sir Dave raised was how to motivate. Very, very crucial and very challenging. And I don't know if we have really motivated our, our students, but based on experience and based also on the feedback from the faculty, because we asked also feedback from our faculty. We conducted FGD, uh, how do we, is the quarter working and all that, or we go back to semestral. So these things, we, we these are strategies. We also um, limit the um, student load. Instead of uh, 24, we said 18 lang muna for when we started last year. Now we're going back to normal. So they already have the regular load for our uh, for our students. So um, Xavier is not the synchronous um, online teaching, but we are more of asynchronous. Uh, due to connectivity, we decided that we will be more of asynchronous. And we said it should be augmented a little bit with synchronous. So um, we last year we said one hour lang yung synchronous because again, ang data sa mga students, maybe it's, you know, they, they're cut off and they don't, we can't even see them because once you use data, ubus na yung data mo once you turn on your cam. So uh, one hour lang of a synchronous session. So we, we visited, but some of our teachers really have to conduct lectures. We said, we, we had our primer. We wrote our primer that um, synchronous sessions should be more of consultation, kumustahan, uh, deepening of lesson. So how are you today? What are the parts of the asynchronous that you don't understand? So that was part of our primer. However, some of our faculty really, especially the math teachers, 
because they really have to you know, solve so they really have to conduct um, a lecture and we 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 can't really do it. we can't do anything about it so when we observe the class the lecture talaga si teacher you know with all the equations and uh, how, how do we motivate so i think um what we've learned really here is uh, the interaction, since we're more of asynchronous, we make use of discussion forum. So that's one. There's a, uh, Because we're using Moodle. So discussion forum, the feature of the discussion forum, the chat, there's also chat there. Um, our teachers also use the uh, messenger group chat because, again, that's easier for them to reach out. Um, discussion forum so that they really participate, graded with the rubric. So that there is really more of, you know, because students nowadays, they will just participate if there are points. So uh, there are already rubrics for discussion forum. So yeah. you post, yeah. uh, I'll I post a question and then you have to answer a post of the other classmates. So in a way, uh, and the teacher also comment, comment lang so that they say, they will feel that, oh, the teacher is present. So something, they're not, they're not alone in the virtual world. So um those are some of the things that we've learned along the way. We've learned it along the way. It's not there when we started. So we've learned <laughs> it along the way. Um, because again, students will also feel that their teacher is present. If your introduction is video. So we, we said we really require our faculty now, you make your own intro video. So yeah. we say, I'm Juliet Dalagan, I'm teaching chemistry. So I, it's really a video because sometimes if you just write there, uh, Juliet Dalagan, and you don't, they don't see only the picture. So at least it's, we require them. So we have our studio and this, you know, faculty will record. But um, however, yung iba, they're not comfortable because during the time, ha, but yung hair, because diba, barbershop and parlors were not open at that time. So they said, ma'am, we can't really do it. So parang mga ano, avatar. So as long as it's moving, so we, we, we just, I know, as, uh, we just accept it as long as it's more of uh, your virtual classroom is, is really alive. So. I think uh, these are the things that uh, we did. A Slido and Mentimeter that was part also of our um, part of the training that we had last year. That if you want to do kumustahan, maybe your uh, Mentimeter was one that we used and Slido. So I think these are some of the, kasi medyo simple lang, di ba? Yeah, Once, yeah. Uh, yeah. Medyo simpler. Kasi kapag complicated, our faculty will really you know, complain. And wow. yeah. For, yeah. yeah, for the info, information of everyone, we received so many complaints last year, especially for interaction. Madami daw yung materials and you don't even see the teachers and all that. So, yes, yeah, yes. And, Maybe you can park, you can park first the uh, challenges because uh, yeah, yeah. we will talk about challenges later, especially in the interaction. Mm. I can agree. I That's just, true. we just started, we just ended our our evaluation, our own evaluation in the office of which of the areas of interaction got low because uh, that's basis for our training. When Dr. Juliet actually was uh, detailing the story about their about their experiences, and well, she mentioned about UP. That's how I think, I believe, the framework of UPOU in, in, in terms of the interaction, the delivery, and uh, etc. That's coming. And, and Dr. Juliet um, mentioned also about the discussion forum because uh, uh, just like at Siliman, what we are actually trying, you know, trying to, to project is more on asynchronous. And I think that is also validated by Dr. Juliet that there are many teachers na baka hindi pa rin masyadong nakuha yung ano ba talaga si asynchronous and how to deliver content in an asynchronous way because they feel that asynchronous is not a teaching delivery but simply just an assignment. It's a replacement of assignment. Um, we can ask again from our expert here, uh, how can we augment how can we augment uh, interaction in an asynchronous modality? Because I think for I think UPOU started with asynchronous, right? Uh, the distance yeah. learning. Yeah. There's no technology yet. Imagine the manual yeah. thing. And I think CERTE is a product of UPOU. CERTE? Ah, talaga. Mm. Uh, DC, DCS, DCS. Diploma yeah, in Computer ah, Science. Okay. Diploma in Computer yes. Science. And I think it's, it's majority of the time is asynchronous, right? So mm. how yeah. do... Uh, Tenny, how do students interact in an asynchronous communication, especially in a discussion form? It was mentioned by uh, Dr. Juliet that having a rubric. And what are the most distinct types of pattern of interaction while they interact 
with others using the discussion forum. Hmm. So, uh, same kami ng ano eh, same kami ng LMS nila, Ma'am Juliet. We are also using uh, Moodle for our uh, as as our LMS uh, at UPOU. So, usually students uh, respond when something interesting or something trivial is presented to them. So, since most of our learners today, especially itong mga nagkokolehiyo nating mga estudyante ngayon are very much uh, virtual learners. So the use of videos, yung binanggit nga ni Ma'am kanina, na even the teachers are not prepared to uh, kahit man lang yung ano, introduction videos. But these uh, videos and photos would elicit instant response from students. So it's very, very important kahit gaano kasimple. So I suggest that uh, teachers should uh, capitalize on the various multimedia materials if you want them to be... Um, actively participating in the discussion forum. It's it's really hard, uh, especially for for students who are also uh, new to this kind of, of of interaction or the way of of, of uh, communicating. So also students are are aware that uh, responding to to discussion forums would be part of their assessment. It would elicit definitely elicit uh, interaction from them. Kung pag sumagot sila sa discussion forum, meron silang points. Yung nga yung binanggit ni Ma'am kanina na you, uh, there should be a rubric, uh, especially for, for asynchronous, uh, uh, asynchronous uh, lessons. So if the students know that they, they will be grade, graded, for sure they would do their best to participate. So it doesn't usually, it, it, it doesn't work all the time, but... Well, we, we, we can try. We can, we can, uh, we can just uh, do whatever we can uh, to elicit participation uh, from the yeah. students. So, ano yung distinct types or patterns of interaction while uh, they are interacting with each other in discussion forums? So, usually, uh, when students are triggered to react to their peers' comments, uh, or when they are, when you set your discussion questions in such a way that uh, they can choose to agree or disagree, this will give them additional motivation to participate. There are some students who are very competitive, who will really demand interaction from you and from their classmates. May mga estudyante tayong ganyan. So, of course, the teacher can initiate or provoke this uh, kind of discussion to occur. So, malaki pa rin ang role natin kahit we want uh, as much as possible that the students interact with each other. Malaki pa rin yung role ng teacher kasi tayo yung promoter. Tayo yung magpo-provoke uh, for them to really interact with each other. Correct, correct. I agree and I think uh, one of the element also in the distinct type of questions or interactions in asynchronous like in discussion forum is how we shoot questions to the students. Hindi yung tipong yung tanong magbasa lang yung tipong there is critical thinking the deepening the yeah, deepening part exactly. I, I i tried also yeah. i tried also just to share i tried also uh, giving points like if you can post questions that can trigger many of your classmates i'll give additional yeah. points so students will yeah. just yeah. like just like just like in our in our lms like right now in this open online course our participants are actually asked to to shoot questions and then from there uh, we will select so that means the questions that we are presenting today are shall we say medyo magandang question no sorry sorry participants but uh, of course it, with the interest of time na rin, so we have to filter so parang ganun siya and uh, we also notice even in the post like itong open online course there are even some questions that uh, really spark the interest of other participants para siyang question framing the way how we ask questions mm -hmm. also to the students yeah. can actually is elicit uh, interest among students um professor tenny that is uh, asynchronous what about for live kasi we, my office been receiving also complaints from or sharing kumustahan kapihan with our colleagues sir kahit kahit anuman lang kahit live hindi pa rin hindi pa rin sila nag 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 interact uh, live na nga uh, we actually allow na lang to switch off the camera kasi siya yung ibang students and so on how do we get more students to participate in a real time or into a synchronous class meeting hmm. just like sa asynchronous if you make it compulsory 
uh, I know that this uh, won't work for everybody, pero um, kung, kung kagaya na yung sabi ni Ma'am Juliet na they, they only require uh, synchronous classes for one hour a week. So I think uh, kaya naman to if, if, if in the beginning of the semester the students know that, ah, okay, for, for this particular time, this particular day, this particular hour, I need to spend uh, yung data ko for this particular subject. And it's compulsory. Um, I will be asked to turn on my camera if I can. Uh, I, I will be asked to participate or, or uh, join in the class. So I think that would uh, motivate them. Pero very important that uh, wag natin gugulatin yung mga estudyante natin. Uh, as early as the beginning of the semester, ilatag natin, schedule. Okay, so Monday... 4 p.m. we will have a synchronous section, session every Monday. So they they will also be prepared uh, para hindi rin sila nagugulat and at the same time uh, ready sila na at this at this hour uh, that this is what I I I I will be doing. And then siguro uh, importante then that uh, we choose platform. Um di ba na share ko doon sa video ko na my mantra is uh, go wherever your students are. So, if they are comfortable uh, using Google Meet, for example, or Zoom, or yung, yung, yung LMS natin ay capable of handling uh, video conferencing, uh, make use of that. Pero, very important that uh, everybody agrees. Not only the teacher, but also the students agree on what platform they will be using. And of course, I am really an advocate of using social media kung wala na talaga, kung this is where the students are most comfortable. I used FB group for my class. Of course, I have the Moodle, uh, the, the My Portal, yung, yung LMS namin, but meron akong, ano, meron akong backup or meron akong supplement na FB group for all my classes. And that's where most of the inter... Doon ako nakakakuha talaga ng mas maraming interaction sa sa uh, social media now uh, i tried using discord and uh if I, I don't know if you are familiar with the kumo space kumo space is actually para PBB. siyang ano eh <laughs> oh, oh parang yeah. pbb yeah parang <laughs> pbb so it's it kung maliit lang naman yung klase mo and you the teacher can handle uh this kind of ano of a virtual ano virtual environment why not why not use that yeah yeah, thank you. Thank you, Tenny. Uh, what I got from your discussion is, uh, especially during the synchronous, it's really more of policies, classroom policies, telling, informing the students before the start of the semester that in in three hours a week, we should have at least like one hour a week. Actually, that is really true because mm -hmm. uh, uh, mm -hmm. at Siliman also, we tried to, we tried to, uh, to tell that to everyone that uh, we are more into asynchronous than than the than the synchronous but uh as mentioned also in context natin is uh hindi talaga lahat ready i mean um not all students even students let's try to focus on the students yeah. while while there are students who are we keep on uh uh telling that uh, we have the millennials we have the gen z learners but meron pa rin, bakit kaya meron pa students hindi active in the discussions online, bakit pa rin may mga estudyante feel reluctant to turn on their microphones and, and cameras. I'd actually been reflecting that also. And in all my literature, it always boils down to teacher's element that there might be the content is not for them. The content is according to the face-to-face -face modality and the content mm. and the... Uh, and and the type of assessment that they have is not tailored fit to the kind of environment that we are going yeah. going right now and uh many sentiments also from the students that or or i mean from the teachers it is even more difficult to ask the students to interact with the teacher as they can choose to hide their face and voice over the online learning platform. No? So parang may mga estudyante na siguro itong hugot ni teacher na ito as uh, class, are you there? Are you there? Are you there? Siguro ganun na mga eksena yan. No? Na parang parang nag-spirit of the glass na. Hello? 
Hello, how are you? Are you there? Siguro ganun ang level, no? Um, but <laughs> but seriously, <laughs> seriously, um, uh, Dr. Juliet, uh, being the VP for higher ed, or in your school, what measures did you adapt to facilitate students? Although you shared a portion a while ago, like you have pop in, pop, uh, to facilitate student to instructor and student to student interactions in online learning, especially under this uh, time of pandemic. Um, thank you, thank you, Sir Dave. <clears throat> Though it was funny, but I think it's very real. Uh, especially during synchronous sessions. Um, institutional policies were actually made you know, when we started, especially on the one-hour session on the synchronous, because again, we know the capability of our students. And um, we also put it in a primer that we are really asynchronous, and then the one-hour session for the synchronous. And very true, uh, experience last year was um, most of the students because it was not required, because we said we will not require them for the synchronous. So we said we will not check attendance, so we don't really give AF, meaning failure due to um, absence. Because again, we were in a way um, kind enough really to give them space because that was something new and we've learned from that. That's why we required the synchronous sessions now. So we said um, if uh, the course is nine weeks to complete because it's a quarter, the required session would be five sessions. And um, if it's a semester, it's about 13 sessions are required. And that should be integrated in your course guide. So it means the date should be there. If the link is already there, then that would be a lot better. That is institutional. And um, our platform is Google Meet, but um, some others, they are uh, using Zoom, uh, MS Teams, others Discord. So we we are, uh, faculty are free, no? And um about the opening of cameras because um, if because our synchronous session is really for consultations so um, faculty really have to call the name of the because it's consultation but sometimes you get more responses if you do the slido and the mentimeter during the synchronous so meaning to say you just you know log in the link and then they go to the mentimeter you get more responses and you get the feel how is your students are doing because they can actually respond more if they don't speak. So they want to chat their feelings. They want to chat uh, their answers. So that's why they put it in Slido or Mentimeter. And um, there was, I, I issued a memo last year about um, at the start of the class, if the yung camera ma open even for five seconds, so that to make sure that you are really there, it's not your sister or your brother or your parents attending my class. Because we heard the news, I don't know if you heard the news in ABS-CBN or maybe Jemmy at that time, that there was one um, person who attended a session and, you know, it was very gross and everything. So he said, we should be very careful. We should know who are attending our classes. So that was uh, the, the portion, not five seconds long, just to see, oh, uh, now are you there? Are you there? That's really true because they don't, um, they, they don't open their camp. So there was a uh, memo issued last year, but I did not issue a memo this year because uh, faculty already have a way of engaging their uh, students, really calling them uh, because when I attended the pop in visit, when I visited the class, they really are calling off cam lahat. But when I call your name, then please open your cam just for how many seconds, just to see if you're really the one answering my question. It's more of a Q and A during um, synchronous session. So okay, nga yung less than an hour so that there will be no um, screen fatigue. So I think that's how we started with really uh, motivating our students. If we really issue already the one semester na synchronous sessions, whether they are required or not required. So there are sessions that are not required, meaning optional for them. Mm. Optional. Mm. So I, so I think that's what we uh, no, implemented. Na we should write whether required or optional so that students okay. will know what to expect also. Okay, so okay. that's on Let's more go of back the to... Let's let's go let, let's look closely on a very specific strategy uh, like for Tenib here uh, teaching for how many years already in an online or an e-learning e-learning environment and I was also mentioning a while ago that sometimes in the discussion forum the way we ask questions and the way we frame our questions elicit interactions no maybe Tenib can uh, can share with us because most of the time 
ang hirap mag-isip ng questions <laughs> in the in the discussion forum to to really spark the interest among the students. Alam nga namang sasabihin mo, oh, sige na, mag-ML na tayo, no? So, paano kaya? Lalo na kung subject mo, napakaseryoso naman, di ba? So, how to use open questions, most probably, to allow students to connect with the course content and to, uh, that are meaningful to them. Or maybe teaching strategies to promote uh, learning, positive learning interactions among among the students. Or pag, pag ano talaga, ano, ano kayang pwedeng pinakamagandang types of questions that can increase student involvement? Ayun, naka-on na pala ako. Um... It's very easy to come up with questions if your subjects are like in the social sciences and, and all those. Uh, pero mahirap siguro ito. Itong ishishare ko is coming from a social science perspective. I, I, I really cannot comprehend how to come up with questions sa mga like uh, uh, mathematics, yung mga ganda na subject. So I, I will be speaking from my experience as a social science teacher. So... Uh, how to use open open questions uh, try to come up with questions or assignments that connect concepts or theories with real life scenarios so this is very essential to engage students of course uh, engaging them with content because it brings uh, uh, some sort of a stronger sense of reality giving them the feel that what they are learning from their books from the materials that you are uh, providing them is applicable to the real world. So, yon. Uh, idalhin natin sa realidad ng buhay yung mga mga questions natin, yung mga mga the way the the way we ask questions. So, usher them from uh, the concepts or theories to the real world. For example, um, if you are teaching business math, um, you can ask your students to use real data from local businesses. Then uh, this will help. Uh, your students that uh, to to realize that yung mga numbers na ito ay hindi lang para sa spreadsheet that these data are actually uh, they can use this data to transform this information the numbers into uh, something that that will be uh, helpful for for the business for the business to be successful so it is also important to use uh, richer channels of communication when when appropriate depending on sa ating mga subjects for example uh, allow your students uh, to read about a concept in their textbook or the materials that you share then watch a video from uh, about the same concept uh, from an expert uh, at dito magagamit natin yung mga ted talks mga ted uh, tedx this will help uh, validate the importance of the concept that we, we are discussing uh, in our class while at the same time giving opportunities for students to engage with the materials um, across multiple sensory platforms. So very visual nga mga estudyante natin, kaya very very effective talaga yung uh, the use of videos, uh, even in, in, in crafting questions. So types of questions uh, that will increase uh, student motivation in an online platform. Again, thought-provoking questions. Questions that will not only elicit the yes or no answer, but questions that will require a follow-up question. Either follow-up question from you, the teacher, or follow-up question from uh, their, their fellow learners. And most importantly, Questions that can be answered by all students. Uh, kailangan nating maging inclusive. Hindi yung tatlo o dalawa lang sa klase ang makakasagot ng question na yun. But uh, questions that, that can be answered by all students um, um, uh, will, will really... Ano, I, I know this is very hard for teachers kasi ang dami na nga nating ibang iniisip. Pero ano, uh, this is something that we can we can uh, try to practice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you, Tenny. When, when, when you were saying about questions that can be answered by many at hindi lang tatlo, so much more na questions na hindi lang yung teacher makasagot, no? So dapat it should be exactly. questions na lahat ng estudyante makakasagot. Kasi after all, the intention really is to spark the discussions 
no so ba- bakit mag magpost tayo ng questions na hindi naman hindi naman makakasagot si estudyante in other words participants when we craft or when we formulate our questions prepare questions like what you posted in the discussion forum so yung question pag yung question mo na i-shoot namin ngayon o oh, gumawa ka ng questions na ganon in your classroom. Kasi feeling, kasi yung questions na pinupost niyo in our LMS, dumaan yan sa screening process ng team. So that means, oh, congratulate yourselves if yung mga tanong na naipost doon, na nabasa namin. O ba? Oo, parang ano na rin, parang uh, uh, strategy or styling na rin siya actually. No, but... Uh, actually, dahil na rin sa interest of time, so we have to come up with a very comprehensive grouping of grouping of questions. Uh, many of the participants also, Dr. Juliet and Professor Tenney, mentioned about uh, tools and platforms. And actually, some of uh, y- you mentioned actually some Discord and even Messenger, Mentimeter. There's a lot actually. Ako um, in in the e-learning pra- uh, practice. I, I, I don't really advocate specific tools. Ang palagi kong sinasabi, anong kaya mo? Anong kaya mong matutunan? Anong, anong pwedeng pwede in your university, in your classroom, or whatsoever? No? Dahil we should not focus so much on the, the technology itself, but paano, pa, anong maiambag ng technology to the interaction. So, ganun siya. So, like uh, uh, Dr. Juliet mentioned about uh, Mintimeter, dahil interaction talaga siya. No? With all this kind, you can add your Kahoot, you can add your other tools. But, to be honest with you, uh, pag may LMS ka, mga Moodle user kasi kami tatlo, no? pag may Moodle ka, um, you can actually set all the settings. Parang ginawa natin sa LMS, di ba? You cannot proceed, participant. You cannot proceed to the next if you don't click or if you don't read whatsoever, if you don't blah, blah, blah. So, ganun siya. Parang may learning journey in general. No? So, pwede na nating i-apply dito yung interaction on our learnings about gamification by a uh, professor um, uh, from the one that we invited from uh, Indonesia that talks about uh, gamification. Gamification no doubt can increase really, really student student interaction uh, it was also mentioned by Tenny about the use of discord the use of uh, facebook messenger and all of this stuff um, the social media in general we all know also that before covid especially in the basic education there was this uh, dep ed order of the utilization not to utilize any social media in the classroom uh, and so on and so forth. I understand also that in the college level, in the tertiary level, um, and dami naman talaga ang teachers na gumagawa ng, ng Facebook, uh, Facebook group, even the even the teach uh, i mean even the parents no parents group parents association because they wanted also to to connect um the the question coming from coming from our participants is uh, there are many you know um trolls there are many fake news false information mga memes uh wearing ideologies and express, uh, expressions of hate are sprouting everywhere there and there what are your thoughts uh, in terms of having this being a platform for academic endeavor? And how do you think the social media can still become an effective tool for learning despite the numerous kind of activities like this? And seeing it, can TikTok be used as a tool for online learning since this is very popular to Filipino students now? Penny? Ah, natawa ako talaga diyan sa TikTok na yan eh. Hindi ko talaga alam kung paano ko sagutin yung question. Pero uh, I'll, I'll answer the first two questions first. So, yung yeah, the presence of false information and uh, and cyberbullying uh, uh, in social media. Incidentally, last uh, Thursday, I was invited to speak to a group of high school uh, teachers, uh, DepEd teachers, and my topic was netiquette and cyberbullying. So this is exactly what I shared to them. Uh, if you want to go on the, the social media route for your, uh, as, as, uh, as a means of, of uh, uh, eliciting uh, collaboration or interaction with your students, make sure that your profile is private. Very, very important. 
when you are creating a group, uh, for example, for your class, an FB group for your class, make sure that you are setting is setting it as a private group or a closed group, exclusive just for your class. Um, ngayon, medyo maano na ang Facebook eh. Dati kasi talagang very, ano yung, uh, madali kang pasuke ng mga, <laughs> ng mga trolls sa Facebook. Pero ngayon, at least, uh, Facebook is already, they have learned their lesson. So once you, once you uh, set your setting into private or closed group, talagang wala makakapasok. Kayo lang talaga yon. So, um, for teachers who, who are really, uh, uh, who wants to try using uh, Facebook or, or um, Twitter, at sa Twitter, pwede rin palang mag-group, pwede rin pala ikaw gumawa ng maliit na community. So, whatever you do on social media, make sure that you as teacher and also uh, encourage your students to, to set your profile on private. I think this is very, very important. And, and as adult learners, uh, we have the choice to filter what we see or read on social media. So ito naman is yung addressing the, the false information and, and uh, fake news that we see on social media. I think our uh, learners, are, uh, 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 higher ed uh, learners are old enough and wise enough, hopefully, <laughs> to distinguish or rec recognize fake news and false information. So as teachers, um, if we are really using social media as our platform, it is also our responsibility to guide our students. Uh, keep them, keep reminding them that not all uh, the things that they see and, and read on social media are true. And make sure that uh, what we share, tayong mga teachers, ating mga studyante, ay validated facts and legit contents. Huwag po tayong pasimuno sa pagiging ano, spreader ng, ng fake news and false information. Ah, uh, ito na, ito. Masaya ta ta yung TikTok eh. Um, I personally am not a, a fan of TikTok. I think it it comes with age. <laughs> Nare-reveal tuloy ang ang edad ano. <laughs> Pero I'm Ganon, uh, personally... it really comes to age, ganun ba? Maybe we can get the sense from our audience. Give us a heart. What do you think? Uh, uh what do you think? Uh, do you think TikTok could be a good platform for online, for learning in general. Paano kaya? Sino kayang magha-heart? Can, maybe you can send your heart, your emoticons as part of the reaction. Do you think, give a heart if you believe that TikTok could be a best or a good platform, an addition to your platform for online learning? Magkaka-review lang tayo ng mga edad dyan. O, yung may isa uh -oh. nagpumingiti na eh, di ba? <laughs> <laughs> wala, ay wala. Wala, ayaw, sigur ayaw nila. <laughs> Dahil siguro ano... O, oh, nahihiya um... siguro. <laughs> 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 Kasi ako, uh, to be honest, I'm not, I don't even have TikTok on my phone. Um, and, uh, same pero, here, same yung, here. Pero naman, meron namang parang nakikita kung may mga silbi din naman, may mga content din naman yung, yung iba on, on TikTok. But I get, yes, Tenny, please go ahead. Uh, yun nga, as, as, I've, uh, I, uh, as I've mentioned, I don't really use TikTok uh, for entertainment or especially for educational purposes. But there are actually uh, some studies, kagabi nagbabasa ako when I read this question, uh, that con uh, validates the effectiveness of using t TikTok for education. Actually, I think last year may nabasa ako na isang... A uh, high school, uh, uh, an exclusive school in Hong Kong, they are using TikTok for education. So especially if your purpose is to reach and engage your students while teaching them concept using uh, yung video creation function ng TikTok, why not? But uh, of course, we have to, we have to, ano eh, we have to set guidelines eh, on, on how to use TikTok. So if you, for example, you are requiring your students to, to submit a video, uh, a video of, of uh, a reaction of, of something that they learn from your class, they can use TikTok. Pero as, we have to be very careful and very, uh, very, uh, anong tawag dito, clear Na, na this is really for educational purposes. Kasi baka mamaya pati parents nila magalit. Bakit ang teacher mo ay ina-ask kang mag-TikTok? <laughs> ba?
Correct, correct. So in other words, uh, ano pa rin siya? Kasama pa rin siya on the, the calibration process natin, identification. Mm. Hindi, yun, hindi yung tipong, oh sige bukas, TikTok na ulit. Ah, hindi na, ganun. So it has to be planned well. It has to be planned yeah. well to be included in the syllabus, in the learning outline, mm. and so on and so forth. Para si teacher or even any stakeholders in the class or about the content, alam nila na it's really focused mm. on the content, not just simply on the on the tool. Like uh, one of the participants mentioned here, Rusan, is actually, well, I think it's more of the content, not the not the application. And uh, I think I have to read this because this is a very good reaction coming from Sir Jeffrey uh, mentioning about mas okay pa rin siya daw na in a face-to-face -face kasi nga merong, merong interaction like during the exam, there is interaction. I think, Sir Jeffrey, there is no question in this. No? Uh, kasi kami ni Tenny, palagi namin sinasabi, hindi natin pwedeng i-compare si online learning and si face-to-face -face yeah. learning. Kasi si online learning naman talaga is another mode of delivery. Yan ang intro hmm, ko palagi. Exactly. Na, let's stop yeah. comparing na online and distance learning. Bakit may choice ba tayo? Wala naman tayong choice in other words. So, let's just continue to embrace it. There are questions actually related to internet, to, to challenges, but we keep also saying that you don't need a sophisticated tools and platforms to win the heart of interaction of our students. There is a so-called, once again, a technology map that will suit and be best appropriate for a certain interaction uh, according yeah. to bandwidth, according to style. Hindi naman lahat synchronous pwede. Pwede naman talagang mm -hmm. asynchronous and so on and so forth. No, So let's just continue that I hope that when we transition to the limited face-to-face, -face, yung dream ko talaga, Tenny and uh, Dr. Juliet is matapos na tayong mag-compare ng online and face-to-face. Sana makamag-move on na tayo. Yeah. Let's not anymore com compare the two kasi iba talagang world nila ni face-to-face -face and ni online. I've been in the research of e-learning before COVID for quite some time. At ganun pa rin yung ano ko, ganun pa rin yung claim kung let's stop compare. Kasi nga, hindi talaga natin pwedeng i-compare si face-to-face -face and si online. Nagiging unfair lang ni online at this time Dahil we are caught off guard, emergency, pandemic, and at the same time, we've been teaching face-to-face -face for quite some time. At biglang in yeah. two months, magturo ka na, forced na to teach. So kaya sasabihin talaga, sasabihin talaga ng iba, pangit talaga si online. But it's unfair kasi ang dami namang research and TENI, UP, UST, and the rest of those online providers Quality naman. Alam nga namang sasabihin ay hindi maganda yung quality in the online learning. It's just that we have no choice that we have to embrace into it. For the interest of time, to our uh, ladies here, I think my last uh, question to you is, uh, we are shifting now from full to limited face-to-face. -face. I know there are there are things to consider in a limited face-to-face, -face, but for sure, for Tenny, hindi makaka-relate si Tenny kasi online naman talaga sila. But uh, maybe Tenny has, uh, has a tip also or a word of advice as we transition to limited face-to-face. -face. Kasi ibang, ibang usapan din ito, di ba? From full online to the yeah. blended learning. Ibang usapan na naman ito. Sasabihin na naman natin, oh, maganda pa rin si. Hindi, you know? Um, ganon. So, um, what preparation should we do and should we prepare for us to improve perhaps, pero pag hindi pa talaga stabilized yung modality namin, to sustain uh, engaging technology-enhanced uh, flexible learning. Uh, I think um, Professor Tenny can give uh, her tips, strategies, or whatsoever. Uh, I-echo ko talaga yung sinabi ni Dave na there is really no comparison and we don't really need to compare. Um, kanina nung uh, before we started, we were uh, actually sharing about uh, there's there's really no turning back. Talagang we are going digital whether we like it or not, whether we embrace it or not. <laughs> so, siguro, uh, parting words is mindsetting. Let us settle this first. I think by now, after two years, we should already accept 
uh, the fact that we are not going back to the traditional teaching and learning. Sorry to say that, pero this is really the truth. So let us be brave and proactive to use multiple media and various platforms uh, presented to us. You are very, very fortunate to be attending this, uh, this class, this, uh, this webinars. Na, na grabe, uh, I was looking at, at the, the entire curriculum, yung 12 weeks na curriculum. Pag natapos mo tong 12, 12 weeks na to, ay nako, so, wala nang ibang mas qualified uh, to teach online but you. So as teacher, we should, uh, no, we should not stop learning, di ba? We should continue to learn and learn the things that we need to unlearn and relearn the things that we need to learn. So if this means new tools, uh, using unconventional platforms, kung, sige, kung gusto mo gumamit ng TikTok, TikTok or IG, why not? Pero just make sure na, na you will back it up with, with a strong pedagogy. Bakit mo siya gagamitin? Then find ways to equip yourselves with the know-how and lastly, embrace the changes because that's the only way to move forward. Thank you, Tenny. And let's let's try uh, let's let's listen also from the administrator's perspective. Kasi nga minsan, dahil kahit anong gagawin from the ground, but yung administration is uh, hindi hindi on the same way like what the yeah. what what the teachers from the ground from the classroom teachers are thinking uh, especially in terms of operations in terms of resources and so on and so forth dr juliet Sir Dave, I hope you will allow me to borrow your words. Now let's stop comparing <laughs> yung, uh, traditional, the face-to-face -face and the online teaching and learning because that has been really the uh, what our faculty have been doing. They always comparing. But after a year, after a year of really doing the full online, um, we have already, we know already what works and what um, strategies that do not work. So we'll bring these with us. Um, we know what are the strategies again to engage the students. So from our learning last year. So at the same time, we know that we want to be more inclusive so that if those um, students um, who have unstable internet, so we've learned that last year. And um, we are preparing now in going back on campus. So second semester, um, we will have a limited face-to-face -face with our College of Engineering, Nursing, and Medicine of already um, limited. Now, uh, we say, now we're saying it's 90% still online. So we are not really going back to the 100% uh, face-to-face. So right now, it's really more of um, choosing the subjects that are really have to be enhanced by face-to-face. Um, uh, -face. Uh, we want mm. to... Um, in social interactions, maybe, because students have to, in a way, meet with their peers. So that could be one. And maybe the laboratories as well. So we have already lined up. And some assessments that really have to, um, faculty really have to let their students be on campus because of some assessments, uh, laboratory experiments, and maybe social interactions. So I think that's how, and we'll be bringing with us the learnings that we have in our online teaching effort. But definitely we will not leave them. We'll be bringing them with us. So that that, that is our current status right now as we prepare for a second semester. For our oh, once course. again, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Danny. And uh, of course, uh, Juliet, um, thank you very much for, uh, we have, as, as usual, every Saturday, um, ako personally talaga, I always learn, especially from our invited speakers, from our discussion, and to the comments, no, and the uh, suggestions and questions from our, from our participants, those who continue posting their, uh, their questions on the, on the LMS. Thank you very much. But my take for this afternoon is student interaction is, still a similar phase like during the face-to-face. -face. It is just that it has different modality, delivery, and the way and the way we consider our learners, not just learners, but infrastructure, as well as the nature and the kind of the students that we have. So once again, daghang salamat, maraming salamat, and uh, take care in Vietnam, uh, Tenny, and I hope to see you and Juliet to see you during the Christmas party of our batch. I hope you will attend. And uh, uh, thank you very much, participants. Back to you, Sir Te.
Hello, thank you. Thank you very much, Sir Dave. I think it was a very enriching uh, discussion and sharing. Yes, I do learn something every week also. And I also get hurt because uh, it makes me feel guilty over the things that I did not do properly. No? But uh, fortunately, I'm not uh, as worse as this as... Uh, okay, class, please turn on your cameras because I'll be discussing for the next hour and a half. No, I've never done that. <laughs> and it's very distracting because I've had a student who turned on the camera and uh, nasa, nasa bedroom and then it's all, you know, you get to see everything that's there. So anyway, uh, yes, I know that uh, our uh, participants a uh, hundred something so when we started we were just at around 60 and we are thankful for your uh, time that you gave no so we just asked for the one hour and uh, we are exceeding again so i'll make this uh we'll we'll do this uh faster for the afternoon as we're about to end so thank you for joining us again and uh yeah, uh, let me share, by the way, in the chat, the attendance in case that uh, you will not be able to access that. So please allow me to share it and uh, go ahead and uh, I know, uh, click that while uh, it's still 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So uh, I'm pretty sure that you can answer that. Go ahead, uh, Mam Lobel. The next, and uh, we'd like to present this certificate of recognition to uh, Dr. Juliet Talagan. So, thank you for joining us uh, this afternoon, and also to Professor uh, Antea Mariano. Please, uh, next, yes, uh, also to our uh, speaker. No, so uh, we are very thankful for. Uh, your time, uh, even if uh, you're still earlier than us. So, parang nakatay machine pa. Okay, so next, please. So, don't forget to take our knowledge check and also uh, please continue to share in the forum. So, as what has been mentioned by uh, Dr. Dave, it's being filtered. Yes, uh, we are actually uh, doing some filtering wherein some of the questions are being shared. So some might have already noticed that uh, their questions are being asked. Yes. Okay. So uh, next, Mam Lobel. And uh, allow me to share in the chat also the uh, link for the evaluation for this, this afternoon. So I'm going to post this now in our chat. Okay, so please go ahead. Uh, I, I would suggest that you do the attendance first because that has uh, a little bit of a time frame. As for the evaluation, uh, you can always do that later in the day. Okay, so next, Mam Lobel. And next week, uh, hopefully that we would be joined by Dr. Peter C. Uh, and then uh, he's from uh, University of the Philippines. So we'll see you next week again, of course. Okay. And next. And so uh, this is now the, uh, the real time for me to ask for everyone to open their uh, cameras if you are able to so that uh, we can also see your smiles. Yes, uh, let's remove the spotlight. We can, let's remove the spotlight, Sir Dave, no? Yeah, I'll go ahead and do that so that uh, Mom Lobel will not be having trouble. Okay, there you go. So, yeah, anyway, she can change the okay. view to gallery. Okay, go ahead, Mom Lobel. I have five sets or five pages let me start with the first one one two three smile okay let's move to the next 
One, two, three. Smile. Okay. Change view ako. Hindi ko alam when I when my picture would be Next taken. Page. Go ahead. One, two, three. Smile. I will be moving on to the fourth. One, two, three. Smile. And we now move to the last one. Last page. One, two, three. Okay. Thank you so much. Yes. And thank you to all our participants for the afternoon. I would also like to thank Professor Mariano. Thank you. Nice to see you again. Uh, I would also like to thank Dr. Dalagan. Uh, I hope to get to see you and I would be able to visit Mindanao once more. I don't know when that would be. Thank you to the pandemic for not allowing me to travel. So <laughs> that's reality. Also the same with uh, the current situation of uh, not comparing uh, online learning <laughs> with face-to-face. -face. Thank you to the pandemic. Okay, Sigi. Uh, Next, please. So we'll see you next week. Thank you, everyone. So Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Professor Tenny. Tenny. Thank you, Dr. Juliet. Thank you. Stay healthy, everyone. Welcome. Thank you, Dr. Tenny and Dr. Juliet and Dr. Marshall. Thank you, Thank Thank you Paul.